flight attendants have a very coveted job. In the 60s, when flying was reserved for the wealthy and the elite, being a flight attendant was almost on par with being a celebrity. But it's not as easy as it looks, even though you can start with just your high school GED. Disclaimer, these things don't apply to all flight attendants and vary from airline to airline. But these are just 10 of the strangest requirements to work as a flight attendant. Don't forget to hit subscribe to hear more strange things that we find on the regular. Life is often stranger than fiction. Don't get married or knocked up. Luckily, this rather antiquated requirement has been phased out, but initially, Qatar Airways required inexperienced crew to remain unmarried or unpregnant for the first five years of their employment. It almost sounds like some weird, culty, Amish practice. What else is required? Beards for the men and no ankle skin showing for the ladies? We'll get to some odd uniform requirements in a bit. But first, Qatar Airways began to run into problems when it would see its newer employees get canned for simply getting married or pregnant in or out of wedlock. Scandalous! This, of course, led to otherwise qualified and skilled staff having to leave their jobs. But Qatar Airways decided to keep up with the times and phased out this almost draconian requirement. It also doesn't hurt that it was condemned by the International Labor Organization. If women get pregnant, they are now offered temporary ground jobs and staff can get married after notifying their company. That last bit is still kind of strange, though. What do you tell a guy? Oh, I'm old-fashioned. You have to ask my father's permission and tell my boss in order to marry me. I can't think of too many other companies or jobs that care that much about marital status. Beyond, perhaps, the military? Mostly so they can give your spouse lots of free stuff. Pimples, beards, and nails, oh my! So, there's a reason why flight attendants have a stereotype of looking like part-time models. I personally don't care who hands me my pretzels or shows me how to inflate my emergency floaties. But apparently other people must prefer physically attractive folk to do these very crucial jobs. I wonder if this is in any way related to the marriage restriction we just talked about. Yeah, something tells me I don't want to think too hard on that one. Anyway, Jet Airways is said to require a clear complexion free of scars, pimples, and blemishes. United Airlines is pretty strict on men's facial hair. To be fair, many workplaces are, but airlines want to keep your mustaches in line down to a fourth of an inch. Mustaches are not allowed to extend more than a quarter inch below the size of the mouth. The bigger question is, whose job is it to measure mustaches at United Airlines? They also won't accept trendy facial hair like soul patches under the bottom lip. Ladies, they're measuring your nails too. Hawaiian Airlines doesn't want your nails to exceed beyond an eighth of an inch beyond your fingertips. Wouldn't it be easier to say, no nails that belong in the Guinness Book of World Records? Body Proportions with all these physical constraints, you would think you were perhaps applying to be an international model, rather than an international traveler. But airlines have restrictions for your height and even your arm lengths. Some airlines have decided not to discriminate based on height, but most airlines require you to be between 5'2 and 6'2. Your arms must also have an ideal reach height. Etihad needs you to be able to reach 210 centimeters without shoes. Meanwhile, British Airways asks for at least 6 feet and 7 inches of height reach. This seems a bit contradictory, however. If you're 5 foot 2, you might need some disproportionately long arms to pull that off. But how else are you going to get luggage out of those pesky overhead luggage bins? Some airlines also require proportionate weight requirements. Air India requires you to have a BMI between 18 and 22 if you're female, and between 18 and 25 if you're male. The average woman in the US has a BMI of around 26. I wonder what flight attendants have to do with the inevitable swelling that comes with being in a pressurized cabin. I don't know about anyone else, but I look about as bloated as a sea lion after a long flight. Flight attendants must refrain from dairy like it's the plague. At least their schedule is flexible with plenty of days off. They probably need it to stay fit. Jungle training. This isn't likely to affect most airline flight attendants, but if you're in Brazil, it might. The Brazilian airline TAM requires its cabin crew to undergo Amazon jungle survival training. It's practical, in the event of a crash or emergency landing, but when you think of being a flight attendant, you probably don't think of prepping like you're going to be on the show Survivor. There is a rainforest located just beyond Tam's training center for people to undergo the course. You will know how to use debris in order to make a makeshift lavatory. You will also be trained on gathering supplies so that you can build shelter. Where's Bear Grylls in all of this? I could just see him teaching the entire course.
Tam also has a maze inside a large green brick building. Within the maze, you have to find the passenger. They use a dummy for the passenger. Meanwhile, the challenging part is that the building is brimming with smoke and is usually dark. Your task is to find the dummy and take it to safety, working with a team of other crewmates. But it's not easy. For added realism, the dummy is not light, because in real life emergencies, you would probably need to be able to carry a dead weight human adult. If you fly with this airline, you can rest assured that you're in good hands with the well-trained staff that can save your life should there ever be a reason to. Crazy or unusual uniforms. While many mainstream airlines will require uniforms that aren't a bother and are comfortable enough for the maneuvers the job demands, sometimes you might be required to wear a more outlandish outfit as a flight attendant. Nothing as weird as Lady Gaga's iconic meat suit, however, thank God. If you're a hostess for Singapore Airlines, you will be rocking a colorful sarong kebaya. Looks more like something you'd see on the catwalk for an Indonesian fashion show or perhaps at a cultural event. It's unique and makes the hostesses look completely swan-like, but it's totally impressive practical. Good luck traversing a jungle or open ocean emergency in it. But they're not the only airline that has embraced a more culturally themed uniform. Lufthansa Airlines revived the Bavarian Dernal look in 2005. They look prepared to give me a beer at Oktoberfest rather than pamphlets and food on a plane. But I can't complain. Skymark Airlines, however, recently came under fire for giving their hostesses cringeworthy uniforms that were too revealing and too short. Air hostesses of the Tokyo-based airline expressed sexual harassment concerns and and many reported that some passengers tried to take photos looking up their skirts. Luckily, these were only worn for a six-month trial in 2014. Delivering Babies that's right, not only can flight attendants rough it in the wilderness, they can deliver your baby too. Granted, a delivery on board is exceedingly rare, but it is part of flight attendant training within the first couple weeks to receive midwife and medical lessons. Who said flight attendants are just glorified waitresses? Deliveries on flight do still happen, however, and just recently this happened aboard a Turkish Airlines flight. Without the comfort of a hospital bed hurtling through the sky in a giant piece of metal, Nafi Diaby went into labor while flying between Konakri to Istanbul. Buthena Inanir, one of the flight attendants, was quoted as saying by the son, the mother gave birth while standing, and we received help from several other passengers. I wonder what this means for that child. What will they put down as their birthplace whenever they have to fill out government forms? What will their birth certificate say? Maybe it'll say, born in the sky, unlike all the peasants. What's even more amazing? These flight attendants that help deliver the baby don't look the least bit phased and not a stroke of makeup is out of place. I would think if I had to deliver a child in the middle of the air, my skin might change at least five shades paler. Personality Questionnaire some airlines will have you fill out a personality questionnaire. While this isn't the only industry that will have you do this, some of the questions come across as a bit strange. At least, if you use the psychometric test provided by Metal, they do. One of the questions included in the brief sample test seemed to be asking me about my opinion on democracy. I'm not sure if they were trying to figure out if I was a dirty commie. But I took the sample test for funsies. I wonder what these answers say about my personality. But with 139 questions, the test claims to measure behavioral competencies such as planning and organization, following work procedures, team management, meeting customer requirements, approachability, proactivity, stress management, accountability, problem solving, etc. Airlines can use this test for screening. Ideally, airliners are looking for candidates with positive can-do attitudes. They want people with superb communication skills as well. It makes sense, since you can be thrown into a myriad of potential problems when traveling or flying through the air in a high-tech aircraft. And sometimes, these problems aren't always handled so well. <coughs> United Airlines. <clears throat> if you want to be a flight attendant, you need to know how to keep your cool. Health exams and physical prowess. While many jobs might want you in general good health, many airlines take this part pretty seriously. Ryanair requires flight attendants to be able to swim at least 20 meters. EasyJet's cabin crew is required to be able to swim at least 25 meters without assistance and to tread water for a whole minute. For those of us that don't use the metric system because we're silly, this is the equivalent of roughly 65 feet. You don't have to be Michael Phelps, but you want to be at least a little Michael Phelps. Alaska Airlines requires flight attendants to be free of all nicotine in their system for at least six months prior to submitting their application. It does make sense since there's no smoking on an airplane and you can't exactly step outside. Canada WestJet also wants to make sure you can lift. 
bro. Specifically, they want you to successfully pass a functional assessment and you must be able to lift 50 pounds from floor to waist and 22 pounds overhead. Just bench press several toddlers several times a week and you should be fine for the job. Air New Zealand wants their flight attendants to undergo an actual medical examination. And Etihad requires flight attendants to comply with the UAE and GCAA visa medical and health screening requirements. But you should be fine there so long as you don't have tuberculosis, hepatitis, or HIV. Getting asked for strange items in flight. Every job that includes dealing with people is usually going to have its facepalm moments. Moments that make any reasonable human being stop in their tracks and wonder in awe how the other human talking to them has managed to not earn a Darwin Award yet. In an online series, Confessions of a Fed Up Flight Attendant, a stewardess that uses a fictitious pen name Betty for anonymity, wrote about the weirdest items passengers have requested from her. Perhaps the most disturbing request she had received was being asked for a cup, lid, straw, and a knife. Now, this sounds dubious, and like the person was trying to make a DIY bomb. But luckily, or not so luckily, the passenger was trying to make a catheter. Ooh. A passenger also asked her for a screwdriver to take the seat apart. This is why we can't have nice things. And hemorrhoid cream. Yep, she'd also been asked for hemorrhoid cream, along with diapers, deodorant, tweezers, and toenail clippers. Apparently, several passengers mistook her for a CVS pharmacy. If you seek out a flight attendant job, it is another one of those jobs where you will often have to deal with adult babies who don't understand or appreciate that you are there mostly for their safety. Strict ponytails and no colorful hair. With colorful hair trends being the go-to thing of urban and sometimes rural millennials, you would think that more businesses would be open to allowing their employees to sport the extra flair. Unnaturally colored hair used to be a style reserved largely for punk rockers, emos, and the like. But now you can see it advertised by many beauty gurus. The ability to create stunning artistic looks that are also beautiful has also expanded. But if you want to be a flight attendant, you won't be able to take part in the fun. Womp, womp, womp. Hawaiian Airlines says in their requirements that unacceptable hairstyles include, but are not limited to, extreme or unnatural colors. In other words, pink, purple, top knots, dreadlocks, cornrows, and mohawks. Personally, I think an airline would be a little bit more fun if the flight attendants could sport some unusual looks. But a requirement from JetBlue is a bit more surprising. They want to restrain even your ponytails. I quote, A ponytail may be secured behind the ears and centered on the back of the head. The ponytail should be no higher than the tops of the ears and no longer than the tops of the shoulders. If you want to have fun here, you can go work at Hard Rock. That's it for today's list, and I hope you enjoyed learning about strange things some flight attendants have to comply with or put up with. And that's all on top of the jet lag. Take a moment to appreciate your flight attendants next time you fly. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe for more wacky content here at The Wacky.